Uh, sit in the presence of God and uh, last Sunday I told you that uh, we will be uh, we will be continuing the same uh, theme uh, even this week also this Sunday also and uh, uh, I just uh, believe that you remember that topic the theme what was that how many of you remember that theme yes I just wanted to know the feedback you know Always, I am preaching, 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 preaching. I just wanted to know that you are getting it or not. Okay, so that's why I'm asking. Now, observing our life in the light of divine, divine perspective. So, observing our life in the light of divine pers perspective from Ecclesiastes chapter, uh, okay, based on Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. And even we have been uh, uh, looking into chapter 3, 4, and uh, we have been discussing many things from those chapters. And uh, this is going to be the fourth session of this topic. I mean, so, and I believe that uh, by this time, chapter three and four became a favorite and familiar, thoroughly understandable chapters, right? Ecclesiastes chapter three and four is so familiar to you and all those verses and the meanings of those verses are very really familiar. Last Sunday, Jesse was not there, right? Jesse, you were not there. Okay, we have been preaching from chapter four. You know, it was it was a great day, and uh, God has revealed that many things to the people of God and uh, what we have to follow. I mean, so this morning, um, uh, let me let me uh, know that you know you have uh, I mean uh, written in your notebook and also. You have the slides here, and also you are listening, I mean, the messages, okay? So I believe that you are getting all the things and the points, you know, it is very easy to understand the things when you are looking into the, into the, I mean, into the slide, okay? So it is very easy for you to understand all these, uh, I mean, portions. And we already know that there are mainly four things to consider in order to understand the meaning of our earthly life. Okay? There are four things to consider in order to understand the meaningfulness of our Christian life. Now, there are many people thinking that their life is meaningless. Okay, But we people, the believers of God, the Christians, are you getting something? No. Okay, the Christians, we believers of God, the children of God, we are always aware about that our Christian life is meaningful. Amen? Shout a hallelujah for that. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Our life and our Christian life is meaningful always. Amen? So we have been looking into four main points. Look above. Yes. Look above. Look within. Look ahead. And look around. Look around. So last Sunday we were listening about look around. It was from Ecclesiastes chapter chapter four. Okay, the maybe the, the the verses from one to one to one to nine, I think. Okay, so anyway, you know, here when we think about look around, when King Solomon when he looked around, he could see many things. He could see many things. Okay, everything which is happening in this world is not suitable for the children of God. And it was not pleasable in the sight of God. It was not pleasable in the sight of God. Okay. And again, you know, when he was watching around the people, when he was visiting some of the group of the people, he could understand that, I mean, many things are happening in this world which is not suitable for the children of God and which is not pleasable in the sight of God. I mean, so he was visiting, the first time he was visiting the courtroom, he was visiting the courtroom and secondly second second slide he was visiting the marketplace right he was visiting the courtroom and secondly he was visiting the marketplace and thirdly he was visiting the highway and fourthly he was visiting the palace so when he was visiting in different places palace so that's what we are going to think about. 
you know in the courtroom there is injustice okay there is injustice the innocent people were tortured innocent people were i mean i mean in trouble and they were oppressed and all those things were not pleasable in the sight of god because god appointed the judges god appointed the leaders god appointed the kings with the purpose of ruling them or guiding them into a proper way into a proper way you know when you read uh, uh, deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 16 and 17 leviticus chapter 19 verse 15 all these verses we understand god was appointing the leaders god was appointing uh, the the kings and god was appointing the judges for the goodness of the people to guide them okay to 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 rule over them at the same time and god instructed them that you should not do any any injustice or you have to rule over the people you have to take a decision according to the will of god as the will of god and take a decision and god was appointing them and god was telling them that you have to lead the people in a righteous way but you know the prophets many prophets and maybe the prophet isaiah prophet amos and the psalmist many times they were speaking against the social injustice of that area you know many of time you can see from the book of amos and book of isaiah and many of the psalms wherever you are reading you will understand that those people those i mean prophets and the psalmist were i mean always giving the warning for the leaders and the el- I mean, leaders and the i mean uh, judges and the kings that uh, i mean you, you have to be careful you are all these things because you need the presence of god and you need to know the will of god and then only you can do that so they were always i mean speaking against all those people because of the injustice social injustice which was happening there so in the marketplace he could see the different types of people he visited the marketplace and he could see four kinds of people there the the poor people the industrious people the industrious people we already discussed about uh, all those things i mean what is going to ha- what is happening there and uh, what are the specialities of those people already i mean we discussed in the last class okay and in the last sunday and the second group is the idle people okay the idle people and the third group is the integrated people and the group is the independent okay so these all people are there when solomon was watching all these people first of all he was so happy okay when he was watching these people he was so happy after few minutes he was so much of disappointed because you know those people were working hard those people were using their skills and their talents but at the same time it was only for their benefit but they were not using the benefit of the other people and they were not using those talents that they give for the name of the lord i mean what is the what is the lesson that we are getting this morning and even in the last sunday also that you know whatever we have whatever we have the spiritual blessings or material blessings or the gift or the talents whatever it may be we are given all these gifts and talents from the lord it's a gift of god and we are supposed to use that for the name of the lord and for the expansion of the kingdom of god i mean and today we are looking into the third place he visited today we are going to look into the third place which he visited yes what is that the roadways okay the roadways okay he went to the court room he went to the marketplace and now with king solomon we are also going to hello 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 we are also going to okay we are going to the road now okay nammude road ilot irangan povu okay nammude road ilot irangan povu etra neram ivada irunnu or court room ilokke irunnu market place ilokke poi avadu nammal tirichu povu ippa evada povu aa road ilot irangan povu so when ah uh, when king solomon was going and visiting the road ways he could see many things that which was interesting which was interesting okay let's just read that verse maybe uh, chapter 4 verses 9 to 12 Wait, wait, wait. Everybody, everybody, look into that portion. Okay? If you have a Bible or device or something, mobile. If a Bible is in mobile or device, whatever it may be, 
look into that portion, then only you will understand what is the meaning of that portion. Okay. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? And though a man must per might prevail against one who is alone, two will withstand him. So this portion, okay, chapter 4, verses 9 to 12, I mean, uh, emphasize about the power of unity and the danger of division. The power of unity and the danger of division. I know that uh, uh, by reading all those portions itself, you will get something, okay, some ideas about that, what pastor is going to preach, okay? So the same thing that I'm going to preach, okay? No worries. So listen there. So what is the power of the unity and what is the danger of the division? What is the power of the unity and what is the danger of the division? You know, when he was watching the roadways, you know, he could see that some people are walking alone, but some people are accompanied with other people. Listen, you know, when he was watching the roadways, now he could see that some people are just walking alone, walking alone, and some people are accompanied with many people. They are walking together, maybe two people or three people, four people walking together. And he was just watching those things and he was finding something special to share with the people of God. He was finding something which is special for the people of God. What is that? You know, we have to think about these things that you know, there will be some people always like to walk alone. Man, that means talking to only a selected people or their close friends or somebody. Okay? You know, there will be some people, even in the churches also, you can see a group of people. You know, they are just, when they just wanted to sit alone and don't like to talk to the people sitting alone and uh, selecting some of the people and only they will speak to those people. They will have some close friends. They will speak to those people. But let me tell you one thing. Church is not supposed to be alone. Church is not supposed to be alone. You are not alone. We are with you. Amen. Every member of this church is with every one of you. Amen. No worries. I mean, whatever problem happens, whatever struggles that you are going through, I mean, all church is with you always. I mean, you know, you don't don't want to be alone anywhere and you don't want to be isolated. I mean, you don't want to be isolated. I mean, the church is with you. I mean, you know, we have to think about these things that, you know, some people are, I mean, sitting always alone, just like, you know, we were, I mean, uh, studying about the, the, uh, what is it, the birds of the Bible. You know, the, 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 uh, what is that? What was the word? Dough and um, pelican. pelican, pelican, then? Yeah, yeah, owl, sparrow. sparrow. Okay, what are the specialities of, of those, uh, I mean, birds? Eh? Some of them are sitting always alone, isolated. Okay? And they are thinking that okay, there is nobody for us to help and there is nobody to encourage us, there is nobody to come with us. But the Bible says that always you have to be encouraged by the presence of the other people, other believers. Hallelujah. You know, there is a, there is a, there, you are getting more strength worry when you are together. Okay? Right? You know, we are coming to that portion. When you are together, when there are two or more people, you are getting more strength. Right? Let me give you one example about uh, our picnic last week. Okay. So, when I was watching there, you know, where is Maria Mandi? Oh, today she, she is absent. Okay. So, Maria Mandi and Lisi Andy, Praise Andy, Ansi Andy, all those four aunties were walking together for the hiking. Listen, 
<laughs> less than you know. I I I just I, I just think that okay, if you're getting boring, I, let me let me bring you into that point with this example. You know, these three four four aunties were walking. You know, they were walking. I was just I mean I mean just so excited to see that you know how these people are walking. You know, and the Indian praise and they just giving an act, I mean, company for Mariam and uh, uh, Lisi and yes, Lisi and yeah, okay. So they were also walking and I was just thinking, you know, how can they walk in this place, you know, the rocky place? We were walking front and they were walking behind and I was watching, you know, how these people are walking and we reached there early and these people reached there later, but they were standing there and they were sitting there, they were watching all those things. I was just thinking, now, if Maria Manti alone was walking, it would not happen. If Lisiani was walking alone, it would not happen. But when the other people, Sister Praise and Sister Ansi, when they joined with them, then when they accompanied with these people, these elderly people, it was okay. I mean, they were easily reaching to that place for the hiking. Amen. So what I'm to, I'm trying to tell you that. You know, when you are alone, you cannot do anything. But if there are somebody with you always, I mean, you are encouraged and you are getting the strength to do many more things in the coming days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. So here you know, understand, the Christian fellowship and the unity is just like a ladder. Coming to the point. You know, the Christian fellowship, you know, we have a fellowship in our church, right? We have a fellowship in our church. So we are maintaining that fellowship with each families. Each families. You know, we have a close relationship with every families in our church. ELC is the speciality of the ELC is that. You know, in I know many churches, you know, they don't have any contact. You know, coming on the Sunday, going back to their home, no calling, no touch with them, and no contact with them. When again in the next Sunday they will come and they will worship and they will go back. Okay? There is nobody to take over all those people. But EL ELC is separate. You know, this is a special church. I appreciate all the people, those who are in our church, you know. You are giving support to the other people and calling the other families and joining with them and having a fellowship together. Now, this is what the God's will and this is the will of God. This is the purpose of God when God was intending to, the, to, to, to establish the, the Christian church. You remember... The Christian church and the Christian unity and uh, the, 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 the Christian fellowship is just, a, just like a ladder. Suppose there is a ladder and uh, there is a ladder and suppose that uh, that ladder has uh, 10 steps. Okay, just, just suppose 10 steps are there for the ladder. What is ladder? Ladder is the ladder. Any other codeon? Any other codeon? Any other? Okay, Kodi. Any? Okay, anyway, any or Kodi, whatever it may be. Okay, any Kodi and with Yasunda. Any or the Cherry or Cover Matragan, the letter Cherry Cherry or a Tamola. Kodi in the morning, you know, it's sitting in a to Patanagan. Okay, so anyway, anyway, okay, Kodi, any or whatever may bladder is, I mean, you know that. Okay, so. Suppose that the ladder has uh, 10 steps, okay? Suppose that you are missing the down one, the first one, okay? Then how you will get into the into the Kodi? Eh? It is very difficult to get into the ladder, the second, second step. And suppose you are missing the top one, the last one, the 10th one, or the 9th one, how you will go to the top place of that? You cannot reach to the other place. You cannot take anything from uh, up. You know, it is it is it's difficult to maintain if something is missing. It is difficult, it is tough to maintain when something is, I mean, missing. Even then, when you think about the church, you have to think about one thing, that we need every person in the church. You believe that? We need every person in the church. We need every child in the church. Be useful in the hands of God for the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. We are bringing all the people together.
together and we need to use every child of our church for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I was just thinking, you know, when in, 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 in the coming days when we are going for the we are going for the uh, tract distribution or uh, some other outreach programs, you know, bring those children and encourage them, give them some tracts and they will give to, distribute to the people. Let them do that. Let them do that because when they have to, they have to get the training. They have to get the training. You know, when I was uh, ministering in India, you know, I used to give the track to Albin and Axa, and I'll tell them, I mean, I also come with you, but you have to give the track. Give the track to the people. You know? So it's a, it's a Christian literature. So they used to give. Even today also, I used to do that because the reason is, you know, we have to encourage our children. We have to, I mean, uh, I mean, I mean, strengthen our children. We have to, I mean, uh, give the, I mean, a training for our children to distribute the track or to, to share the gospel. You know, whenever they were going to the school, I, we used to give the Bible also, Lutzerman's also in the in the bag. Okay, a baggy kodu thodum, our school is in the tarking or a kodu thodu 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 thodu. Okay, the reason that I am saying this one is, you know, every person is important in a church. In a Christian church, every person is important. If you are missing one, one step of the ladder, that's a great missing. Okay, so you have to I mean, bring all the people together and let us all work for the name of the Lord and for the expansion of the kingdom of God. Amen. So listen to the particular verse. Maybe verse, I mean, uh, what is that? Um, um, verse 9. Yeah, verse 9. Once again, can you read, uh, Elsa? Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. Two are better than one when it comes to walking. Sorry, working. Yeah. Two are better than one when it comes to working. Okay. Okay. Okay, this is the first thing. Okay, nine. Okay, two are better when it comes to working. Secondly, verse 10. Two are better but when it comes to walking. Okay, two are better than one when it is working. Two are better than one when we are walking together. Thirdly, verse 11. Two are better to keep warm always. Two are better to keep warm always. Verse 12. Verse 12. Two are better to resist somebody for the safety. You are getting into that? Okay. You, you get the point, you know. The, the, the four things are there. Huh? Two are better when it is coming for the walking or working. Secondly, two are better when it is walking. Two are better when it is keeping the warm always. And two are better to resist somebody for safety. But in verse 12, verse 12 itself, he says that three is three are better than one and two. Listen. Okay? Until the twelfth, the, 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 the first part of the twelfth verse from verse 9, he says that. Two are better than one, two are better than one, two are better than one, two are better than one. But the last verse, the twelfth verse says that three are better than one and two. What do you mean by that? The Bible verse is like this. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. Verse 12. Which means what? You know, a cord I mean, of three strands is not easily broken. You know, especially it is written there are three strands. You know, what is that? You and me and God. Okay, you and me. That means two are there. Okay, that's good. That's good. At the same time, where there are three strands together. Okay, one together. That that is getting more strength with God. How many we believe that? Amen. Amen. You and I are there at the same time where there is God. Where there is God. I mean, with God, everything is possible. I mean, go with the Lord. Hallelujah. Do everything with the Lord. I mean, without God, don't do anything because there is a failure. 
Hallelujah. Go with the Lord. And every time when you are going, when you are walking, and when you are doing something, go with the Lord. That's what we read in Psalm number 127. That the builders working in vain if without God. Watchman keeps um, the, in, in vain the city I mean, without God. And also it's vain if you rise up early and retire late with God, without God. Okay, so that's what we read in Psalm number 127. You know, many of the people are doing something. They are hard working. I mean, they are doing many things. But they have no profit in spiritual life because they are doing everything without God. They are doing everything without God. That's the reason the psalmist is saying that, you know, when the builders are working without God, it's in vain. When watchman keeps the city without God, it's in vain. And when you rise up early and when you retire late, without God, there is no meaning at all. Hallelujah. So this is what we understand. You know, whatever it may be, you know, when there are more people, when there are more people, there are many things that are going to happen. Hallelujah. So we are supposed to engage the other people. We are supposed to support the other people. We are supposed to help the other people to grow in spirit. To grow in spirit. I mean, so we are doing that. Thank the Lord for that. Especially, you know, you have to think about the road and the path of the Palestine. You know, when you when you when you go to the background of these verses, maybe um, verses chapter four, verse. Um, Yes, 10. Verse 10. Okay, read uh, verse 10. Aiza. For if they fall, <clears throat> one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. Okay, the people are walking. The people are walking in the roadways. You know, the roadways are the ways, or the, 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 the roads and the paths of Palestine of those days was not just like the American roads. Okay, here we have good roads, right? So we, we have the plain road and we have the leveled road or something. But there in Palestine in all those days, there was no leveled road or there was no tar road or there was no, I mean, a proper road. You know, the, the roads will be filled with the rocks. Okay, the roads will be filled with the rock. And also there will be some hidden rocks and also there will be some hidden pits. Okay, so what happened when one person is walking alone, if that person is falling down, that there is nobody to support that person, right? Okay? Suppose that it's in, in, in a rocky way, you know, when I was meditating the word, I was, uh, that, that came to me into my mind, you know, uh, Maria Mandi and Delizia, you know, I was just thinking, you know, it's a rocky place, it's a rocky road. You know, in that place, when one person is walking, if that person is falling down, there is nobody to support, okay? There is nobody to give a hand. Okay, but when you are walking with other people, when you are two, I mean, there is a strength and that person can help you always. And I was just thinking, you know, if that support is enough for us, if that help is enough for us in our Christian life, what is happening? You know, many a times we people are falling down. You no, know? we are sometimes going backward from the spiritual life. You know, many a times we do not know what to do. I mean, we do not know, I mean, how to take the, take the next step. And we are asking to the Lord and we have nobody to share that problem. You know, but remember this morning, the spirit of the Lord, through the word of God, it says that when I mean, you have somebody to share your struggles, you have somebody to share, I mean, your problem. I mean, if you are stuck in, 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 the, in the way and you are saying that I have nobody to help me, I have nobody to support me, I have nobody to encourage me. Hallelujah. This morning, the, the spirit of the Lord is saying that you have God and you have many people with you to support you, to help you. Hallelujah. You know, there are many people. I mean, struggling in spiritual life even and they are saying no we cannot do anything and we are helpless I mean I don't know I mean how to put my the next step I mean I don't know how to go forward I mean spiritually dull and the spiritually weakened person you know they are asking and they are looking for a person to increase them I mean so I, I, I request every every person those who are sitting here let you be the person who is engaging the other people Hallelujah. Let me, the people, um, let me, the person that I am encouraging other people, helping other people. I mean, when they are walking, when they are walking, when, when, they, when, they, when they need the warm-up, 
I mean, I mean, whatever it may be, when they are in a need, reach there, speak to that person, call that person, and tell him or tell her that I mean, God's presence is with you. I mean, God will help you. Amen. Will you decide for that? Will you decide for that? I mean, today onwards, I mean, you are taking a decision. I will call that person. I mean, if, if you know that, okay, that person is very weak and that person is getting very troubles and that person is going away from the presence of God. If that person is, I mean, I mean, putting down his faith, grace them. I mean, help them. I mean, help them. I mean, help them. I mean, them. I mean, help them. I mean, help I mean, we support you. I mean, spirituality. Let the Marathi country and all that. All the manners of our Agathon Dairi. Kerala. That is a good thing. I mean, even that little Atmaratham. I mean, the Yuvath India Atmaratham. We are talking about Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I was just thinking, if the secular field is, I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, the, the unity is important. I mean, then what about the, I mean, spiritual field and the Christian church? And uh, uh, I was just thinking about those songs. I mean, and I have many things to share with you. If the if uh, uh, the Spirit of the Lord is giving the time for uh, me to, I mean, share all those things in the coming days, I mean, we will look into that portions. But I mean, let me let me just, I mean, stop the message here because we have some announcements also. I mean, but I mean, let me let me uh, tell you one thing that we are going to meditate that word once again. I mean. You know, we have the Spirit of God in our midst. How many of you believe that? We have the Spirit of God in our midst and the Spirit of God is speaking to us. Amen. The Word of God is God's. And the Word of God is, I mean, powerful. And the Word of God is strengthening. At the same time, the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, the influence of the Holy Spirit, we have to experience in our lives. And the Holy Spirit is speaking to every person that you are special in the sight of God. You are special in the sight of God. Hallelujah. Many times, I mean, many of the people are sitting alone and thinking that, okay, there is nobody to help me. Close your eyes and pray. Hallelujah. I mean, you are thinking there is nobody to help me, oh God. You're praying and you're just saying, Oh Lord, there is nobody to encourage me, Oh Lord. And a Sahai Kano, and a Daira Puritano, and a Bella Puritano, but the Arivilla in the Vijayaricha, or Chakirikina, Vecti Jirangal order in the Bagalkar and the Yuta Niatma or Pikino, Ningalot upon the Yuta Nasani Tunda. Ningalakata the Wogan the struggles, sir, number Karta of the Night are you know. Hallelujah. Sabirula Priya Putarake. Ningle a cooda, a struggle in another will, Ningle Kuadi Pratikuan, Ningle a Tahiri Pertuan, Ningle a Shakti Girikuan, Ningle a Sahai Pan. Hallelujah, they were signed to him. I mean, they were the Krabi Matramala, Savila Priya Pertabrimunda. Hallelujah, King Solomon says that. I mean, two are better than one. Hallelujah, when there is a unity, when there is a harmony, there will be a peace in the family. There will be a peace. In the Christian church in this morning. Hallelujah. That's why I'm saying that uh, I mean we have to submit ourselves in the presence of God. The people, those who are feeling that you're alone, that you feel that isolated, no worries. God's presence is with you. I mean, there are many people, there are many fellow brothers and sisters with you to encourage you. And also let let us be a person who is encouraging other people. Let us help others. Let us encourage other people. Let us support other people. Hallelujah. Let us I mean, surrender our life in the presence of God and let us pray together. Hallelujah. Shall we all close our eyes in the presence of God? And uh, I mean, I request, uh, uh, I mean, uh, Brother uh, Joey.